Well, hello and welcome to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection since 1991. Today is Friday, the end of the week, November 3, 2017. My name is Pete Connor, your show's host. And we've got an informative, as we like to think usually, shows today. We're going to have, first up, Mike Jensen from Triumph Graphics, who will be announcing the 2018 calendar open house and some other things about Triumph. And then that'll be followed by Diane Spitzak and Gary Johnson, who will come to highlight St. Paul Church's 150th anniversary of Upper Tanner and the Holiday Bazaar. Uh, before we get to those folks, we always on Friday like to take some time to highlight our valued sponsors, our premier sponsors, the City of Oatana and Oatana Public Utilities, our primary sponsors, Amy Swain Hearing Centers, Little Theater of Oatana and Oatana Foundation, our interlude sponsors, Bremer Bank, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Office, Cedar Valley Services, Carlson Branstead and Company CPAs, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Horizon Eye Care, Oatana Area Business Development Center, the Steel County Historical Society, Steel County Transitional Housing, the Third Hand Video Productions, Tri-M Graphics, and TPS Insurance. We hope that you support these wonderful uh, sponsors uh, that help us to bring our valued programming to you, our valued viewers. Uh, say thanks to them when you happen to run into them or in, into their shops, uh, into their service area. Uh, Oatana Today is av available to you only by virtue of their sponsorship. If you have anybody that you think would be a good sponsor, why don't you let our pr show's producer, Leanne, know by giving her a ring at 390-5751. And now we'll take just a bit of time for some sponsor messages, and we'll be right back with Mike. So please stay with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet. And I'm Dr. Nick Vincelli of Horizon Eye Care. We want you to see what you love and love how you see. We're proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection, and welcome to Mike Jensen. Hello there. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Yeah, good to have you. Valued sponsor. I, we appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so it's nice to have you here after hearing your valued sponsorship announced. So good. Let's talk about uh, your business. First of all, I have to ask the question about where the third M came from, because when I came to town a long time ago, it was M&M &M Printing. It was. It had been M&M &M Printing. Um, my father, when he started the business back in 1981, um, decided he would name the business after his children, Mike and Mary. Um, my sister's name is Mary. And so up until it was probably right around 89, somewhere in that neighborhood, um, we were fine, didn't have any issues. Um, but then we started to do some work up in the Twin Cities area, and at that time there was already an M&M &M printing uh. existing up there, and they decided, mm, no, you need to change. And yeah. so we didn't want to go too far away from the M&M, mm -hmm. since that was a brand that we had established in the mm -hmm. community. And so at that time, my parents had a dog named Max. <laughs> and so um, that's where the third M came, was from my parents' dog, Max. Oh. And um, my sister and I will always say Max was treated better than either of us ever were. <laughs> Unfortunately, Max has went to the great beyond, yeah, yeah. but um, so that's the third M. I'm glad I asked. There you I'm, go. This has been on my mind for quite a long time to ask Mike about <laughs> that. But, um, so Mike, Mary, and Max. <laughs> Mike, Mary, and Max. It's, exactly. Yeah, Upcoming is going to be the calendar, um, uh, the showing, a re revelation of the calendar, which we're, we're not going to do today. But let's talk about the open house and we the will. activities that. This are. is something that we really look forward to. This mm -hmm. is our um, our twenty fourth calendar that we've put together this year. The two thousand eighteen one is our two thousand or twenty fourth time we've done this project. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's been fun over the years watching the community kind of embrace it. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that uh, back when we started originally, I mean, it was pretty small and pretty, you know, back in that age before the digital mm -hmm. entries and, and people, you know, out there snapping shots like crazy. I mean, you had to be careful in how you used your film and how many shots you took, mm -hmm. and it was expensive to develop and all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly gone through an evolution mm -hmm. um, for us. Um, but we started in 95. 
And now this year, for example, um, we had 670 entries to the contest, um, which is really pretty phenomenal. Most of them, the majority came via our website, um, you know, social media. They can upload the digital file to us. Um, Holly and our team then takes mm -hmm. care of everything and monitors all of them. Um, we had um, entries from 44 states this yeah. year. So that was fun as we started, you know, looking at where they were coming from. Um, but 40% of our entries were from actually from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So we were really pleased with that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that had to do with digital marketing mm -hmm. and the way that we promoted it. We put a lot of energy and effort into um, promoting it within the state of Minnesota, yeah. really wanting to draw from, from that region and that area, mm -hmm. um, you know, as we started to, to pull in entries. Mm -hmm. So we were very pleased with those results and, and, and how that all came together and came to be. I can't imagine, you know, obviously you get 12, right? Or 13. 13 with a cover. cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and the decision making of having, you know, the, the, the uh, it's just kind of like doing the, the duck stamp, you know. Of oh, exactly. Because they're, they're all so good. They are good. It's, it's a fun process that we go through. We um, typically have anywhere from like nine to 13 judges. I think we were at 11 this year. Um, judges that came in for an evening. They come in at 5.30, we feed them a little bit of supper, and then we get rolling. Mm. Um, and we're done usually by 9.30. Mm. Um, we have a pretty set system. It's a multi-round process mm. that we go through. Um, we look at each of the photos once. I hold them up and look at them, and they have a tally sheet, and they're either yes or no. Mm. And then for round two, we go back through them, and they have to raise their hand whether they voted yes or no. And a photo has to have 50% of um, the respondents or the judges mm -hmm. say, yes, I like that one, keep it in, mm -hmm. um, for it to move on into, and to be advanced on to the next round. So pretty quickly we're able to zero in on a, a smaller amount. Yeah. Then from there we start looking at quality and we start dividing them into seasons. Uh. And so we'll have you know the four seasons. And then the next round is we start putting them into buckets as far as months. Mm. You know, what might work for this month, that month, yeah. um, and then work that way. And then at this point, we can do what's called bring them back from the dead, <laughs> where a photo that maybe didn't make it through, you know, because maybe, you know, if we have 11 judges, I mean, it maybe had four votes instead of six votes mm. or whatever. But mm. as you start looking at it, it makes sense to move that into a certain month or it, it fits well with the flow of the images and the, the, sure. that are there. And so we have that opportunity to bring them back from the dead. And so every year there's at least one or two that come back from the dead. And it makes sense I mean, when you do that, when you re-look at it as a, as a whole. Um, but it's quite a fun process. I've often said it would be fun to look at it from like a, a psychologist to come in and watch us. Because when these group of it judges start in, in the beginning, most of them don't know each other. And um, they... they um, you know, very timid mm -hmm. and a little bit shy about what they're they're doing. By the end of the evening, they they start to get to know each other. They're mm -hmm. a little more comfortable, and then they start to advocate for mm -hmm. the photos that they want in and why they want this one and not that one. And it's fun watching the give and take sure, on that. Sure. So um, that's been a fun process yeah. for us over the years. Where do the judges come from? Where how do you select them? <clears throat> the judges come from all over. Um, part of our philosophy with the calendar is. We want the calendar hanging in people's office space, in their homes. Mm -hmm. um, we want it used and out there in the community. And so we pull together a nice cross-section of the community, various mm -hmm. clients, um, people that we know in the area. Um, and then we'll usually pull in a designer or two or a photographer mm -hmm. or two, just so we have someone with that photographic eye or yeah. that design eye. Um, to help ensure that the quality of the photos are there and the images are there. Yeah. Um, so we're able to do that. If I wanted to submit a picture, or maybe I should say pictures, how many could I submit? You can enter two photos, and the contest runs from July 1st through September 30th okay. um, every year. And so that's a, just a finite time frame, and that works really well for us. Yeah. So the cool thing, though, is if you're interested in entering a photo, if you come to the open house, which will be November 11th, right. Um, so in, in um, a week from Saturday, um, you can come to the open house and we will put all 670 photos on display. Wow. So we kind of vacate our press area, push all the presses to the side, and mm -hmm. we have big boards that we put up and we have all the photos on display. And so the community really enjoys coming out and seeing all of the entries mm -hmm. and rejudging it and reevaluating. Did we make the right choice, not the right choice, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, so it's a lot of fun for us to see that happen. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this year with our winners, we're super excited about that. Of the 13 entries, um, only four of them are outside of Minnesota. Uh, so the majority are from Minnesota, or actually a number of them are from Owatonna. Sure. And so we usually have the um, winners on hand. And I'm hopeful that we'll have Miss July on hand this year. Because Miss July is Leanne Alt. I will tell you that much. I'm not going to show you the image, but she is Miss July. So is that the centerfold? I'm not sure. Is July the middle month or? <laughs> So if you want to come see which ent winning entry um, Leanne had in the contest. Oh, yeah. And all of the entries are blind judged. I mean, they don't know where yeah. they came from. They don't know who the photographers are. Okay. Um, one of them, May, is actually from Hawaii. Oh. And it's a cute picture of a little girl. And I talked with the mom of the little girl. And mm -hmm. it was fun hearing the story and the backstory mm -hmm. on that, too. What does so. it mean to the, to the entrants, the contestants? Uh, if Miss July, in this case, is the, going to be the, the, the champion. Uh, I think for them, it has to do a lot with bragging rights or just yeah. being able to say, hey, you know what, I took a photo that was a winner. Um, you know, they get a small stipend and, and we, you know, are appreciative of what they do. But in reality, I think for them, it's somewhat the bragging rights. Yeah. They'll get calendars. They can hand them out to family, sure. friends, that sort of thing. Sure. Um, the open house itself, though, is going to have a ton of stuff going on at it. We really have a kid's focus. And we have a whole Santa, not a Santa area, but a um, kind of a Santa's workshop mm -hmm. area. Lots of hands-on hands -on, activities yeah. for, for kids. And one of the things, the coolest thing, and hopefully people spread the word, um, we have a station set up where where kids will write a letter to Santa, mm. and I have rumor that Santa writes them back. Ooh. Ooh. So we have a special connection Ooh. and a special mailbox that they put their letter in, yeah. and miraculously Santa writes them back. Wow. And so we need to let get the word out that that's going to happen, yeah. um, so that people, the kids, take advantage of it. Because we've heard some phenomenal stories over the years when kids get those letters from Santa. Yeah. It's a ton of fun. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, no, no, not to go mercenary, but does this have any impact on your business when you do this and you get the, you know, the people from, as you say, from how many states and maybe even foreign countries as far as they can, maybe Canada. And does anybody come to you to say, you know, give us a quote on... Because a little that? bit. We don't necessarily track that. Yeah. I mean, really the tool itself for us is the calendar, by getting good entries and good quality photos, people will hang them in their office yeah. space and that sort of thing, and that's where we get the traction good. from there. So. Yeah. Let's, one more time on the, the date and time of the um, open house. Saturday, November 11th, and from 9 until 1. Mm -hmm. um, lots of fun things there for kids. There's all the photos, 670 photos. You'll get a free calendar. Um, there's refreshments, so a great time to come yeah. out, especially as you're making your way around to all of the other craft yeah. Um, yeah. things. And I think you're going to talk with one of those shortly here. Yeah, we so are going to do that. I think theirs yeah. is the same day. Yeah, so absolutely. Good. Mike, thanks for being here to give us the update. Thanks for your sponsorship. Thank you. So very valuable. And thank you for being with us today. We're going to take a pause for some messages and we'll be right back with Gary and Diane. Stay tuned. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain and I want everyone to hear better. Carbon monoxide is a colorless odorless gas produced by gas-fired appliances in your home. The state of Minnesota requires that you have a carbon monoxide alarm within 10 feet of sleeping areas in your home. We suggest you have a digital readout carbon monoxide alarm. That way we were able to check and see what the uh, concentration amount was when the alarm went off. This has been a public safety tip from the Owatonna Fire Department. Hi, I'm Betsy Linger from the Owatonna Foundation. Your generosity has made Owatonna a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Owatonna Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Owatonna Public Utilities, real people, real reliable, real progress. Making life a little easier day after day, taking pride in our community. What you say, a voice you can talk to. We're growing with you, with you in mind, in everything we do. Oh, a ton of public utilities. Well, hello and welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection, and welcome to Diane Spitzak, Gary Johnson, 
Hello. to talk Hello. about St. Paul's Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. Upper Tanner. I'm yes, that's right. Knowing about as well mm -hmm. as Bazaar. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of important things. Um, what's most important? What do we want to cover most? I mean, they're both important. <laughs> Time-wise, should we talk about bazaar? First? Sure, let's that do sounds that. great. I appreciate yeah, let's talk the, about the bazaar. Appreciate the opportunity. Surely. Thank you. Um, history of the bazaar. Some folks like to know that um, it's been going on for 77 years consecutively. Uh, and back in 1940, it was recorded at a vestry meeting, which is our kind of our board of the mm. church, that the women thought they could raise $200. By 1958, they raised it to 700. And Pete, would you like to know what we? Brought in last, <laughs> last year, <laughs> close to four thousand dollars. You know? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the lady that we lived with in the apartment building was Alice Hartle. Oh and yes. Alice was. Yes. I remember so distinctly. Boy, this was a big deal. Getting ready for the bazaar. Yes. Big deal. Yes. Big correct. Deal. Yes. So, yeah. um, date again. The, it will be on, on a week from this Saturday, November eleventh. Okay. From nine to one, and it um, starts uh, with. We have several different areas in the church, mm -hmm. so the folks can come in and they can go upstairs where we have our crafts and our um, collectibles, we call them. We have some beautiful antique dishes and things mm -hmm. that we will be offering for sale, as well as the women of the church, mm -hmm. um, you know, the crafts that they make. The, we have great knitters, mm -hmm. um, people sewing things, um, and we also then downstairs we will have um, the bake shop mm -hmm. where we got some great bakers at St. <laughs> Paul's. And also our quiche lunch, which uh, is um, the quiche is a ham and cheese, and then we also offer a spinach quiche, mm -hmm. which is vegetarian yeah. and gluten free. Sweet. We wanted to offer that because there's so many people, you know, around yeah. with restrictive diets oh, these sure. days, and that is seven dollars. So okay. that's you get the quiche, you get uh, muffins, uh, a salad, dessert, and coffee for seven dollars, mm -hmm. and the luncheon goes from ten thirty to twelve thirty. Okay. But the bazaar itself is from nine to one. Nine to one. So, mm -hmm. and are the vendors and the producers of the for sale items all uh, St. Paul? Uh, they parishioners? are all St. Paul parishioners. Okay. Yes, that all is right. correct. And we have some small children, this grandkids and things yeah. that want to participate. So they're going to have some of their little things that they've made will be there this year as well, which is kind of fun to get the youngsters involved. So you kind of, you have to have somebody that wants to carry on this yeah, tradition. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, after so many years, that's the last thing you want to see is that it dies. Die, so, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm something I'm very passionate about as a, are a number of our ladies in yeah. our church. So I'm very grateful for that. Well, uh, at the end of the day, you have the proceeds last year, 4,000. What do you do with the proceeds? Well, as in back in 1940, um, the, the ladies wanted to help the church. Mm -hmm. And so they thought they could raise $200 to help the church. And that's really what this is for, mm -hmm. is our contribution back to the church mm -hmm. to help with the overall day-to-day -day maintenance. We also pay for our cleaning supplies, mm -hmm. our coffee supplies, mm -hmm. and make a pledge to the church mm -hmm. to, to keep the doors open, really. And so that's what this mm -hmm. is for. We do other things like the Lenten lunches, which mm -hmm. you're probably mm -hmm. aware of. Mm -hmm. sure. That that goes back out into the community mm -hmm. to, you know, different different organizations that we like to help. Yeah, excellent. So um, it's going to be a, a, a order of good food and, you know, the visual uh, it's delights. A, it's a wonderful a time. It's be. a wonderful yeah, time. Yeah, yes. Okay, good. Um, we'll probably come back to finish up with some oh, other things, okay. Diane, as you have uh, okay. will pop in your head. But Gary, talking about the church per se, the 150th, the sesquicentennial, if you will. Yes. Um, and Upper Tanner, we've mm -hmm. got to know more about how, because right. that suggests a Lower Tanner. <laughs> yeah, at least in this poor mind. Uh, let's talk about the events uh, upcoming in uh, 2018. Well, everything is very special this year at, at St. Paul's as we celebrate the 150th anniversary of the first structure built on that site for worship. Mm. It was consecrated November 15, 1867. Mm. And if you know the layout of the church now, it is the east, it's the west portion, excuse me, the west portion that is facing Mill Street. It's on the back side. Mm -hmm. It's no longer used as the main sanctuary. Mm -hmm. um, the one with all of the, the stained glass windows is where, where the worship goes on today, but it is used for multiple purposes today. Mm -hmm. And we have been, uh, all year long, we have been planning things and carrying out things. I'm a member of the history group there, mm. and we launched a self-guided tour of, of St. Paul's. 
and that took, took us about a year and a half to put together and it covers many significant items within the church dating way back to the 1850s. And it's a self-guided tour. It's not where there are tour guides available. A person takes a pamphlet, there's a map inside where they follow it and they just go through. So that's one of the things that we've done to help celebrate the 150th. Sure. We have a display case uh, that we have been highlighting other sig significant items that are actually in uh, Upper Tanner itself. Uh -huh. And then we had the bishop here on October 15th, and he held a service and reconsecrated oh. the building, that okay. portion of the building on October 15th. And we're going to be holding a pioneer service in that room later on this year as another activity, followed by some kind of an ice cream and, and cake uh, social. So what we've been pioneer, doing a lot of things. What is pioneer service? Well, like? uh, it, it would be a service exactly uh, from the manuals, from, from, from all of the hymnals, uh, from the service. Uh, the rector says he has all the materials to carry on uh, a pioneer service as it would have been held back way, 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 way back. Mm. And so uh, that will be a, a fun thing to look forward to. And we might even invite some of the parishioners to dress up as, you know, pioneer, oh, you know, a little... Uh, you know, wouldn't that be something? Whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. How many rectors has St. Paul's had? If oh boy, that's a, a, that's a very that's, that's a, a very good one. I don't have a total before. number, but we the the very first rector goes back to 1858. That was mm -hmm. J. Lloyd Breck, okay. and following following all the way through today's yeah. uh, rector, which is Father Michael Tippett. I don't have an exact that's number. Okay. Well, Breck, but that's the would, spread. Breck would indicate maybe some attachment to the Breck School. It, yeah. Exactly, that yeah. is exactly right. He was a. Um, he was right out of the Seabury Mission, which, which was in Faribault, the seat of the Episcopal okay. Church, which is today Shattuck St. Mary's. Okay. And he held the very first service here in Owatonna, mm -hmm. the first Episcopal service, mm -hmm. June 22, 1858. Mm -hmm. Now, 1858 was a big year for the state of Minnesota. It became the state on right. May 11, 1858. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Provided that we have time, I can wrap a little history around this 150th. What, what kinds of things did, were going on nationally, locally, and statewide? Sure. I don't know how much time we have left, but well, why not give it a try? We're going to be a little, we've got some time, sure. Yeah, so um, on August 19th, 1860, St. Paul's was officially incorporated. Mm -hmm. And there was no structure yet by then, mm -hmm. because the first structure was built in 1867. Mm -hmm. Uh, the population of Oatan at, at that time was 609. Wow. I wonder yeah. where people worshipped then. Where, I wonder where the... Well, they worshipped in, in people's homes, homes okay. and offices. The, mm. fr the very, very first service was held in somebody's office in downtown Oatana. Okay. Now, it wasn't too big if there were 609 yeah. people. Yeah, right. But then uh, clergy from the Seabury Mission in Faribault kept the ball rolling mm. all the way through 1867 and uh, they were held in people's homes and in businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, in uh, St the Steele County Fair was held October 17, 1860. That was the very first Steele County Fair, mm -hmm. so that was quite a big year. Yeah. Now, in 1860, of course, on a national, um, on a national line, uh, Lincoln was, was elected the 16th mm -hmm. president. Right. On December 20th, 1860, South Carolina seceded from the Union. And on April 12, 1861, the Southern forces fired on Fort Sumter and the Civil War began. Yeah, yeah. And this is all while St. Paul's has been in operation. Yeah. Now, a little bit more in 1867 for Owatonna. Did anybody know that Harvey Johnson was mayor then in 1867? Did we <laughs> no. know that? <laughs> Believe it or not, there were 10 or 11 hotels existing in Owatonna in 1867. Yeah. One called the Arnold House, yes. sounds familiar, yes. and the Owatonna House. Uh, one year later, the population was 1,500 yeah. at that time. Railroads were in existence at sure. the time, and the banking business was just getting going at that time. And so um, it's kind of fun to weave in all yeah. of this history yeah. with, with uh, how long, you know, how far back is 150 years and what was going on exactly. at that time. Right. Jumping forward a few years, in 1883 and 1884, the largest part of St. Paul's was built, the part with the stained glass mm -hmm. windows and that was consecrated in August of 1885. Locally in Owatonna at the time, the population was 3,170, 
And many people still remember this, the state fair was actually held here for mm -hmm. two years, right. in 1883 right. and 1884. That's yeah. about all we have to That's about, you know, yeah. someone you know, very close to you, is giving us some <laughs> distinct order here. Yes. Because history could take us a long way, but we, yeah. we're getting close to the end and, and we yeah. need to do that. But we'll push the pause button in order for people now to finish this all right. on site. Yes. They can come and learn that's on right. site. That's exactly. and that would be exactly. the thing to do, along mm -hmm. with the bazaar. Yes. That's, the, yes. that's the thing. So, uh, good reports. Uh, Thank you. Chock Thank full. You. Too bad we don't have more time, but that's Dates all it goes. Bizarre, yeah. Yeah. Dates of the Bazaar are a week from this Saturday, November 11th, from 9 to 1 p.m. at the church. And very well, and that'll do it. Thanks again for being here, and thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm. We're going to take some time for sponsor messages, and then we'll be back to close up. So, please stay tuned. At Triumph Graphics, we think beyond ink. That's why you should make us your source for creative concept, design, print, mail, and web. Check us out today at triumphgraphics.com. <laughs> Ten seconds. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. Welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection. I've got an announcement that I'd like to read to you at this time. Uh, as of the 1st of November, the city of Owatonna has taken over the running of the public access channel from Charter Communications. Uh, the city has not yet informed us as to the procedure that we need to follow to get the Owatonna Today Show to air on its new public access equipment. And until the city works out these details for all who provide programming for the public access channel, not only Owatonna Today but others, our show will not be aired on the public access channel 181. So for a short period of time, we hope you will continue to watch Otana Today on your YouTube channel on the internet. Go to, you, go to YouTube, type in Otana Today Show in the search box, and all of our shows will come up for you to be on the YouTube page. Otana Today Show feels badly for the, any inconvenience this might cause you or you, our valued viewers, but unfortunately we have no control over this situation. You're certainly welcome and, and an urge to call the city to get them to the pro get the programming up and running on the public access channel as soon as possible. And we always, as always, thank you in advance for your continued viewing of the Owatonna Today Show. A couple of announcements. Owatonna Hospital Auxiliary is hosting its 55th annual Holiday Bazaar on Friday, November 3rd, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday, November 4th, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Owatonna Hospital. Lunch is for purchase at the Owatonna Hospital Prairie Meadows Cafe from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. each day. Proceeds from this event help support Owatonna Hospital's patient care mission and provide scholarships for students in nursing and health-related fields. Habitat for Humanity of Steel, uh, uh, Steel Wasika area is searching for donations of gently used or new strings of holiday lights as well as non-breakable ball ornaments. These will be used for a youth event decorating pallet trees for the Holiday Lighted Parade on November 30th. Donations can be dropped off at the office at 108 West Vine Street before Wednesday, November 8th, and that's going to take care of it for today. We do ask you to stay tuned uh, or come back um, on Monday when we will have, um, uh, we'll hear about the upcoming IRIS, the Infants Remembered in Silence Turkey Trot. So please come back on Monday. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you have a great weekend.